Hello, this is Bob the Astronomer. What I'm doing right now is making a brief video showing um, <clears throat> a little bit about uh, my new very portable planetary telescope. Uh, <clears throat> I'll, I'll tell you the name of it first. I bought it from a company called Explore Scientific. I, I think you can find it just by doing www explorescientific.com and uh, this telescope is an 80 millimeter f8 refracting telescope uh, just an ordinary achromatic telescope uh, it's on sale now for <clears throat> pardon me $129.99 I think it is approximately $130 that's in United, United States dollars and it cost me a little bit for shipping charges and the exchange into Canadian uh, dollars but it still was a very good bargain one of the reasons I bought this was because I wanted a telescope that I could look at the planets and the moon with with really good image quality and also have a telescope that um, that was uh, a short enough focal ratio at f8 that I could get really good low power views with a 32 millimeter plus eyepiece, this will go down to around 20 power. So, uh, the exact name of this telescope, the exact model number, I'll show you the full length tripod on it and everything. As you can see, that's the little chair, the little stool that I use to observe with looking through the eyepiece. And the, um, <clears throat> the exact model number is FL hyphen AR. 80640TN. The TN star, uh, stands for the Twilight Nano Mounting, which is the way the tube is supported on the tripod. Okay, um, what I'm going to do now is uh, just show you some of the controls on it and how it works. And there are a couple of minor issues that arose uh, when I got the telescope and I'll explain those to you a little bit. First of all, this is the eyepiece focusing unit right here. And uh, you focus the eyepiece by turning this knob here. You can see it moving in and out like that. I may actually give you a view through the eyepiece uh, after a while. This eyepiece you see right here actually came with the telescope and it's, it's a reasonably good, that's the only eyepiece that came with the telescope which is standard practice with a high quality telescope. They usually just supply it with one low power eyepiece of good quality and they expect the telescope owner to uh, add any eyepieces that he wants to uh, uh, afterward. Uh, one of the big eyepieces I'm going to be using this with to look at the planets <clears throat> is I bought a four millimeter uh, TMB planetary eyepiece for looking at the moon and Mars. I got it from a from a company called eShow Online on eBay and there's other focal length eyepieces of that type of planetary eyepiece. Another good brand is um, Orion Telescopes. They sell a really nice planetary eyepiece called an Edge On Planetary Eyepiece too. They're very good. They have uh, actually extremely high image quality over the entire field of vision so that the planet always stays sharp and the moon always stays sharp no matter where it is in the eyepiece. I'll show you how the eyepieces are changed. You turn that little screw there <clears throat> and the eyepiece pops in and out and you could add another eyepiece of different power. That pops right back in there. That's the one that came with it. As you can see it's a nice looking eyepiece. And uh, you can actually rotate this thing to get a comfortable angle for viewing right here. Just loosen that little screw. That holds a, a, a mirror diagonal in place. It actually pops right out of there so you have to be careful. So you just rotate this down to the angle you want to observe. And then you have to tighten this screw up again. Actually, I made a little bit of a mistake. There's two set screws there. That's why it wasn't working very well. There we go. Tighten that up. Tighten that up. It's good to have two screws. The thing, there it goes. Okay, now it's at a, an angle where I, where I can use this little chair and look through the eyepiece better. You could tilt it any way you want. And uh, you see this black tube right here? That little tube right there. That thing right there unscrews from this this little brass little chrome tube right there. You just thread it off and they have a short version 
this 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 like it eliminates this that you could put in on and put the diagonal mirror back in there this pops out just like an eyepiece does and what that does is that makes the focal plane go out a little bit farther from the diagonal and what that does it allows you to maybe take put a camera in there with a camera adapter and take photos or use different eyepieces like you could use a uh, a, a turret eyepiece holder to hold multiple eyepieces at the same time. I have one of those and I'm thinking of using it. And uh, this is the red dot finder. I won't actually show you controls on it. What you do is you look through this at about this angle right here. And when you turn a switch on, there's a little battery in there that turns a little red dot on that's projected like a big bright star against the sky. And there's little controls there, little knobs you turn. I think that's one of them right there. And I think that's one right there, but I'm not sure. I, I'm not too familiar with it yet. I got it in use once. And one knob turns the, um, one of those little knobs is a switch that turns the uh, light on and off. <clears throat> and um, it turns the, the little light on, little red dot light on and off. And then it also con is a rheostat that controls the brightness of the red dot. And the other two switches tend to move the dot either sideways or up and down in small amounts so that you can get a bright star or planet or the moon in this telescope or even even like in the twilight or even or even in the daytime I think the dot would be bright enough to see you could line this in the say on the top of a telephone pole and then you line up like maybe uh, you know uh, you know several hundred yards away several hundred meters away and then you line up the dot with that and then the dot is perfectly coordinated with the direction of the telescope it helps you aim the telescope um, also, this you could see a little 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 um, device right there that allows you to take the finder off and on. I think you could see it right there. That you just unscrew that, and the finder slides right out of this thing right here. So uh, that's you have to actually put that together when you're assembling the telescope. This actually can clamp the eyepiece holder at a at a focus that's exactly so it won't shift around, which might be good when you're taking photos. Or maybe if you have a really heavy eyepiece in the thing. But um, actually I found that uh, usually I don't use this. Because I, I, I might actually t control turn this back and forth when the thing is clamped. So just for ordinary looking through the thing, it, it, it really is not necessary. I usually leave it loose like that. Okay, so uh, there's the focusing. I may actually, if I have enough time in the video, I might just give you a look at some distant objects through there while I'm actually focusing it. So... Uh, this, there was a, an issue with this thing right here, this diagonal hole. This is actually a pretty good mirror diagonal. It seems to work very well. It's got an accurate mirror in it as far as I can tell. And the issue with that is, is that this thing I think right here uh, was unscrewed. Or that one right there, the little part that pops in. The thread, all I had to do was thread this in. It was no problem. Just twist this like that and thread it right into the diagonal. And uh, it was fine after that. It seemed to work. Also, this uh, this is the mounting. I'll show you the mounting right here. This is actually not a clamp. All that is is a handle that is, allows you to swivel the telescope up and down if you want to like that pretty easily. Uh, this thing was all seized up when I bought it. The factory had clamped. There's a bolt right in here with a nut and a bolt. And all I had to do is undo the nut and bolt because the factory had clamped that in and there was a little tiny rectangular metal projection that limits the way this goes up and down in the thing and it had clamped into the wrong spot. All I had to do is uh, undo the nut and bolt and uh, put that thing back together in the right spot and uh, to the, the, the nut back up to the, to the tension that I thought would work best. One thing I like about this mounting, it has no slow motion controls on it. Uh, uh, this clamp right here allows you to take the tube off. You undo that and there's a little thing there that pops the tube out. You have to be careful when using it. You can take the tube off if you want to move it around. And also right over here, I'll get underneath this thing. You see there's a little, uh, a little uh, knob right here. You undo that a little bit and you can slide the tube back and forth this way like back and forth right inside this little part here and that allows you to balance the tube very accurately and all you do to turn to balance the tube is as you uh, as you shift that back and forth and when there's exactly almost exactly the same amount of force required to move it up 
as it is to move down, then you know the thing is balanced fairly accurately. That's how you do it. Okay, just like that. <clears throat> okay, just like that. And inside this little plate right here, if you take it off, that, that little plate is like, it, it just exposed to the air when you undo this little thing right here. It just pops right off the whole tube. And there's a little uh, uh, opening there that will accept a quarter twenty threaded um, section from a camera tripod. I'll show you a camera tripod I got. This is a camera tripod I got right here recently. I just got it on the internet from uh, eShow Online. It was not very expensive. It was only about forty dollars. And it looks rather innocent, but it's really an extremely good tripod, as far as I can tell. Really good. A lot of the inexpensive tripods have a shoe that pops off and on, which I find disconcerting. It's kind of uh, inconvenient and actual to use. And I'm always wondering whether it's strong enough to hold that something fairly heavy in a tripod. But this is an old-fashioned thing. See this control right here turning around? It allows the, you to actually thread the... Um, a camera or a telescope tube or anything you want right under that tripod without actually um, having to take the shoe off and on and when that's clamped on your telescope or camera is clamped on there it's really clamped on really solidly and so you don't have to worry about it popping off or anything like that and the tripod actually has another section on it. it actually goes taller than that you can see that there's a quick clamp on it and the legs, it actually has another section that I haven't even opened up yet. So it's capable of going up quite a bit taller than it is actually right now. And actually this center post with this clamp right here allows you to move it up even farther up and down. So uh, what was I going to do? Now I'll show you how the lens cap comes off right here on the thing. I've got enough time in the video. I have a limit of about 15 minutes. Okay, I sh there, this is the lens cap right here. Uh, normally, I, I, after I bring the telescope in from observing at night, I let it sit around for about 20 minutes to half an hour or even more. And then any dew that happens for, to form on the lens surface when you bring it into the house actually tends to evaporate. It, it, it might not hurt to let it sit around for an hour before you put any dew caps back on. I'll actually show you the lens in there. I don't know that you could see it in the video, but there's a lens right in there. It's an 80 minute. There it is. Yeah. You can see the light shining right through there, through the eyepiece. That's like looking through the telescope backwards, kind of. But that's the lens right there. It's a nice, really nice lens as far as I could, I could tell, quite accurate. And, uh, okay, what I'm going to do now, this, this, like, uh, this has no backlash on it. You really don't need much in the way of slow motion controls on it. You can, and once, once you put it in a spot, it seems to stay put. So what I'm going to do is focus this thing a little bit onto a distant tree if I can get it. There's a neighbor's a tree way off in the distance about two or three hundred yards away. I'm just going to see if I can get that on the eyepiece and give you a look at what it looks like. I hope it, there it is right there. It's already focused pretty accurately but I'll get it in there to see if I can give you a view actually with a camera looking right through it. I don't know whether this will work or not. Probably won't. No. Nope. Yeah you can see it in there. There it comes. Just taking the camera a little, it'll be a bit jiggly. I'll actually show you it, what it's like to focus the thing, if I can get this in the right spot. Hold on. Just a minute. Here it comes. It's not working out very well. But anyway, it'll give you an idea. I think you could see the tree in there for a minute. Is the tree still there? No, it shifted around a bit. There it is. I don't have much time left on the video. Just a few more seconds. There's a tree right there. I'm focusing it back and forth. I don't know whether you can see the image change or not. You can see it blurring in and out. There we are. That's pretty good. You can see it getting sharper. That's a neighbor's tree right there. Now I'm going to cut it off right now and do another video. Here it goes. 